What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we are going to hop into the world of both UI UX and front end development. And I'm going to show you how to create this here. Uh, first a design, uh, how to create a masonry layout design in Figma and also responsive considerations as well for you know mobile and tablet. And then we'll hop into the front end world where I show you exactly how to make this responsive mobile first so that you can go through all of your different iterations of the layout here with just really minimal CSS for the most part. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now wait one second, if you're truly interested in front-end development, you should definitely check out the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. They've recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So click on the very top line here in the YouTube description to get access to the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is I create a frame, obviously a layout. It doesn't matter if, for this particular purpose if we're gonna start with mobile first or desktop, it's up to you. And then also set up uh, a grid, both um, row-based grid and column grid, so it can make creating and designing this uh, masonry grid layout uh, quick and easy. So let's just start with desktop first, and we're gonna come out here. Uh, I think we'll just go uh, a darker, desaturated blue background. Doesn't matter what you choose, obviously. Um, and then also we'll go ahead and, although I have to back up, it does kind of matter. Typically for uh, photograph-based galleries, uh, the background they're sitting on, if there's going to be you know, uh, a gap between each thumbnail, uh, it'd be best if it, you avoid mid-tones typically, because that way you'll get more contrast uh, from the background based on. So either go darker, like real dark like this, or lighter. All right, so let's do a layout grid here, and I'm going to choose um, a column based. We'll just do 12 here, and we'll do a margin of like 120 and we'll leave it like that. And then we'll also change the color. We'll just make this white um, right around there, 8% opacity. And then we'll also add another one. And this time it's going to be a row based column. And this one I might just play around with a little bit. I, for the count, we're gonna make it something crazy like 240. Um, and then also for the height, we're gonna choose top. And I think 10 will be fine actually for this. And then we'll take this back down to eight for opacity. And that'll work just fine. All right, so now what we wanna do is just get out our rectangle tool and start uh, creating the layout. Now, when it comes to the masonry grid, you have to ask yourself how many rows and how many columns do you want? So let's start with columns first. If we wanna have four by four, like you know, four actual thumbnails on one row, that's going to be the span of four columns here, four times, or no, three columns rather. Uh, and so three times four, of course, is 12. So um, we're just to start down here somewhere and maybe we'll draw out somewhere right around this height. All right, so as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're using six rows. And we just wanna make sure we adhere to this now. So if we duplicate this, uh, maybe this one. Now, typically a, t a typical boring old fashioned, you know, sort of image gallery, which is, it's completely fine if you wanna go this route. There's nothing saying that you can't. Oops, yeah, I misaligned this, uh, the way I structured these real quickly. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're aligning these to your actual, uh, not the gutters. Like you wanna leave the gutters the empty spot spots. There we go. So now if I delete these real quick, um, we can just duplicate this real quick. There we go. And then we'll demonstrate this by duplicating that. There we go, now we have equal white space um, based on the rows and columns between everything. So you could completely do this, and of course we can hide, I uh, toggle these off, and that's fine. But a masonry grid approaches things a little bit differently. Um, let's do one more column, just or one more row rather, and there we go. And so what we'll do with the masonry, it's actually pretty fun. We could just take this, we'll delete this one, maybe we'll extend this one over, Maybe we'll delete these two and extend these down a little bit. Um, maybe we'll delete this one and extend this one down. And then maybe we will delete this one and extend this one down. 
there you go. So now it's a much more interesting layout uh, for your photographs or your thumbnails or your pictures or whatever you're doing in here. All right, so what we'll do now, now that we have that finished, uh, we can go ahead and let's uh, duplicate this artboard and we'll go ahead and say at a certain break point, we'll go ahead and just revert to maybe just a two by two. So it won't be masonry. You could make it masonry if you wanted to, but we're not gonna do that. Um, let's delete uh, or just drag that over maybe to like a desk or a tablet size. We'll get this in view real quick. Um, let's delete some of these. All right, so we know we have 12 columns and so we want this to span six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six right here. We'll duplicate that. There we go. And so we'll just go two by two. All right, just like that and we'll be able to structure that pretty easily. All right, and then next up will be a phone. So on a phone, typically, you can still go two by two if you wanted to, it's not a big deal. Um, let's adjust real quickly our columns. Maybe we'll change this to 40, there we go. We'll go ahead and delete all these with, with exception to the first one. Um, we'll get this kind of scrammed in here. And then for a phone, we can just take and do it one per row. All right, so we'll come up here, extend it out. And we'll say that's the goal, essentially for structuring the layout here. All right, so let's toggle these off. And so our goal is to go from mobile to tablet to this in front end with HTML, CSS. All right, so let's go ahead and switch gears now. I'm gonna to switch to, um, let's see, our project here. And all I've done is created an index.html. Um, I hit the exclamation point enter to get that stuff up there. Um, and then also I have a CSS folder with a main SAS file, which I'm gonna click watch. And you can download the live SAS compiler or extension over extensions to, to get that working. And then also we'll right click and open this with live server and We'll get this structured and set up right over here. And we're gonna start with mobile first, which means we're going to first structure all of our regular default CSS uh, in order to create this layout over here, mobile first. Then we'll use media queries to adjust to this. And then finally to this masonry layout. All right, so I, first we're gonna make sure we link our CSS file, otherwise it's not going to work and we'll be punching desks and then your knuckles won't like that, so we don't wanna do that. All right, um, I think it's a little bit larger so everybody could see. The actual HTML markup for this, extremely simple. Um, we're just gonna have an overall container, um, and then inside of here, we're gonna have an image source, um, and that's going to be uh, deer.jpg. This is just a picture I got from Unsplash. You can use any photograph you want, it does not matter. Um, and I'm just gonna reuse the same element because I'm lazy. And then we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these, all right? So, all right. So now if we were to go to look at this, this is the result. They're all massive because they're not image 100% specified yet. Let's close that out. And let's get ready to rock with our CSS. It's not too bad, it's not too I uh, cumbersome to create what we need. So the first thing is we're gonna set the height to 100 viewport height on the body element. And then we're gonna do a display grid and place items center, all right? And the reason, by the way, we're doing height, 100 viewport height is if a person's on a 4K res monitor and we're looking at the masonry layout, uh, we want that layout to be centered vertically um, and horizontally inside of the, the browser. Uh, so this will make it so that it sits perfectly in there because the height of the body element by default is not 100 viewport heights, all right. So display grid, place items center, that's these two elements, we'll just place that overall container or allow us to take that single element that we have in here, which is the display uh, container, the class cl container class rather, uh, and make it just center um, vertically and horizontally. And then we'll, we're just gonna make the uh, background, I don't know why I put background white. Oh, you know what, I decided to use a white background actually for this. It doesn't really matter, and guess what? The background's already white, so I don't know why I put that. <laughs> because I had a different color uh, initially. All right, so now we're gonna do display grid. And by the way, if we take a look at what's happening, not much, if nothing's basically changed yet. 
Um, we're gonna do a gap of 10 pixels and then a width of 100%. All right. Again, nothing's changing just yet. Um, we're gonna take our images though. This is where it will start to change. And we're gonna do a width of 100% and a height. We're just gonna do 150 pixels of object fit cover, all right? So when we do this, we can now see they're all kind of just uh, squished. That object fit cover will essentially make it so that each image uh, or photograph is kind of all set in the same exact scale. Of course, it's gonna be like that anyways, being that we're using um, the same image, but if you have images of different aspect ratios and stuff, um, that's a, a handy way. So already we've achieved uh, this, oops, wrong one. We've achieved what we wanted to, if I can get the freaking thing out, there we go, right here. So this right there is the same as that. Now, of course, if we drag out, whoa, growing eyeballs. All right, don't want that. So now we're gonna ask ourselves, you know, at what point do we want this to become two columns? All right, and a handy way to do that, Control Shift I or F12, you can see um, the little width right there in pixel format. I know it's gonna be hard to see on my resolution, but like right, right here is like 460 or so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use like 420, <laughs> all right. So at media only screen and min width 420 pixels. So what this means is anything I, you know, if the device that's viewing this particular page is larger than 420 pixels, then execute whatever, whatever is inside of here. So what we'll do is we're going to take our container. We're going to say, cause it's already a display grid. We're going to say grid template columns and we'll say repeat. We want two columns. Remember, because it's a tablet version. So two columns and one fractional unit, which means they're just gonna be equal. Um, outside of that, let's give ourselves some more um, white space on the left and right side of the browser. So we'll just say 80%. Um, and then we'll also say image height 100%. So now if we look at this, there we go. Simple enough. All right. So if we drag it in here, let's uh, get rid of that. There we go. Whoop. Now let's get to the actual masonry layout. So what we'll do is copy this. And this one will have a change you know, pretty quickly, uh, maybe at around 600 pixels. All right, so for this one, we're just gonna overwrite the grid template columns. And this time we're gonna say repeat four, because remember we have four columns on our masonry layout. Uh, one fractional unit, that's fine. We're also gonna do grid template rows. And we're gonna say repeat three, and we're gonna put in a, a, an actual fixed height of 120 pixels. And the width here can stay 80%. And this is where this part's gonna change. Uh, this is where we have some extra work to do. So if we look at it now, we drag out here, this is what we get. But we're really, wow, I was a little bit loud there. <laughs> really, we want this. So how do we do that? Well, we need a way to access each of these elements here, all right? So what we can do, instead of giving them classes and reference them, we can just say, and nth of type, and we could say one. And then we could say inside of here, grid template columns, or grid column rather, sorry, getting ahead of myself, grid column, I uh, two slash span two. All right, so tip really, if we look back to our reference really quickly um, right here, we can see the very first one by default, it's only spanning one row in one column. So we can forget about that, that's gonna be default behavior. So really we wanna uh, select the next one, which is right here, and this one sits on column two and row one and spans to column three. All right, so we're, we're gonna, what we're going to do is change this to two, which is a ref, reference to this one right here. And we're going to say grid column, this is going to start at two, the second column, and it's going to span two from two to three. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so if I save that, I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out Oh, yep, there we go. That's exactly what we want so far, at least to this point in time. All right, uh, next up, 
we're going to just replicate this line and we're going to say the third one. What is the third one? All right, well, we'll come back. The third one starts on column four and spans from row one to three. So it spans three, essentially. So what we'll do is in here, we're going to say column is going to be four, four, and we're gonna add a grid row. And we'll say uh, it spans row one, span three. Just like up in grid column, grid row will do the same. It's the same exact format and structure of this stuff. So if we go back, we'll see what this looks like so far. There we go. One, two, three in terms of rows. And then we'll go ahead and replicate this one. Next up is going to be this. So it's row one, no, row two, column one, and it spans I uh, two rows, so span two, starting at row two. All right, so for the column, it is one, one, because it doesn't spam any type of columns, it just assumes that first one. And then grid, grid row is gonna start at two, span two. So let's look at that. Now, sometimes this stuff gets broken. Oh, no it doesn't, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it does get broken, just like it did there, because I didn't change this uh, nth of type to four. There we go. All right, and then next up, this one's easier uh, because if we look back at the reference, it's only spanning one row and one column, starting at uh, row two, column two. All right, so column, we can get rid of this. Let's change this to five. So five is just gonna be column two and two. Actually, let's see if what happens if we just uh, leave that out. I believe we don't even have to specify that one as it's already there. Just like in the, the first one, we didn't have to specify as well. Um, for uh, the sixth one, this is something that we will have to work with, which is this one. So it's column three, row two, span two. Yeah, all right, so column three, all right, so what we'll do here is an nth of type. This is going to be six because we're skipping the fifth. And let's change this simply to grid row uh, two, span two. All right, not exactly sure if that is what we wanted. I'm fairly certain it's not. If we go back, it's this one that we wanted to change. So. Do we have to put in grid column? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I uh, will put three and three. There we go, we've moved it over by specifying the actual column. Um, next up is going to be uh, seven. Now here's the thing, we've already achieved what we wanted. So if we compare it real quickly, and I move this over, let's move this over just a bit. This is exactly what we wanted in terms of the actual structure of this grid. So now if we pull this in, we could see how we're taking this and making it fully responsive with our ultimately on desktop only masonry grid. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, it's always very fun when I take the world of UI UX and also combine it with uh, front end development. I'm looking forward to doing more stuff like that here in the near future. Definitely check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet. It's going to be relaunching very soon here at January 4th of 2022. Enter your email if we're not yet at that date and you'll be notified when it releases, all right? So as always, I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.